Hi, my name is Philip Carlson and I'm the creator of Midgic and uh, today I'm going to give you a video tutorial on how to get Midgic up and running on Windows. So the first thing we will do is to download Midgic. Yeah, and we want to keep this file since it's no virus. Then you run the installer. You'll also have to tell Windows that this is no virus. From here, you simply proceed through the installer. And when it's finished, we will install the first dependency, which is the RTP MIDI driver by Tobias Ericsson. So we'll go ahead and install that. When this is finished, you have to make an important choice depending on the sound card of your computer. If you have an ASIO compatible sound card, you will choose to install the ASIO multi-server. If you don't have an ASIO compatible sound card, you will choose to install ASIO for all. On this particular system, I don't have an ASIO compatible sound card, so I will choose to install ASIO for all. And if you have an ASIO compatible sound card, you will choose to install the multi-server. And in that case, you can go ahead and skip to the end of this tutorial, and I will show you how to get Magic up and running using the multi-server. But since I don't have an ASIO compatible sound card, I will continue and install ASIO for all. When the setup is finished, you are ready to start Magic. So simply start Magic and uh, head over to the setup panel. And here you choose ASIO for all as your input device. Now you open up the ASIO for all control panel and uh, make sure that you select the advanced settings. And as you can see here, uh, Magic is trying to occupy both the input and output of our device. So what you do is you uncheck the output and uh, you restart Magic. And once again, head over to the setup and make sure that you select ASIO for all. And this time, when you open up the ASIO control panel, you will see that the output is available to our digital audio workstation, which is very nice. I will be using Ableton Live for this tutorial. Inside your workstation, you want to select ASIO for all as your sound card. And uh, by looking at the second control panel for Ableton, you can see that uh, the output is available uh, right here. The output is available while the input is occupied by Magic, which is exactly what we want. So now I'm just going to get my guitar and I will play some notes and hopefully we can see that the sound will be available to both Magic and Ableton at the same time. That way we can capture the guitar with Magic and translate it to MIDI and actually hearing the synthesizer from Ableton Live. And as you can see, it is working really nice. Uh, unfortunately, you can't hear the result right now because I'm using a freeware in order to record this video. And uh, this freeware didn't support audio recording. Uh, too bad. Anyway, I'm going to continue and show you how to get Magic up and running using the multi-server instead of ASIO for all. So for the sake of this example, I will pretend that ASIO for all is my real sound card. So the first thing you do is that you start the multi-server before you start Magic and before you start your DAW. And inside the multi-server, you select your real sound card in this panel here. Now you can start Magic. And inside Magic, you go to the setup panel. And here, it is very important that you select ASIO client instead of your sound card. Your sound card is used by the ASIO multi-server, and Magic is connected to the ASIO multi-server by using this ASIO client as your input device. So here, you select your real sound card. And when you open up your digital audio workstation, it is very important that you select ASIO client or ASIO multi-client as your audio device rather than your real sound card. And uh, basically that's it. I hope this tutorial helped you get Magic working on Windows. Uh, if not, please email me and I will do my best to help you. Uh, take care and enjoy using Magic.